In this video, I want to show you how you use the Global Wind Atlas version 3.1 to calculate an annual energy yield. To do that, I'm going to use an area that has been defined already in another of the video tutorials. So to find that area that I have saved on my disk, I'm going to go to my areas and then press the upload area button. When I do that, I find the Rashafon GeoJSON file that I have previously defined and downloaded and I'm going to load it into the Global Wind Atlas. When I do that I quickly get to the location, the island Rashafon, and I see the, the area that I defined before. What you can do as well with the Global Wind Atlas is to explore the, the, the terrain and so if I get rid of that layer and then put on the satellite imagery, I can see the island of Ras Hafon and how it is this very dry terrain and, and windswept terrain um, and obviously surrounded by the water. So it would be interesting to see how the winds change with height, uh, given that this is probably uh, quite a low roughness length. So we can um, go back to the uh, layer as before, the mean wind speed. And um, I can firstly adjust the scale back to get up to a nice high wind speed for the, the red end of the scale. So that's been done. And I'm also going to have a look at the, the statistics, so the, the area data plots, um, and uh, draw your attention to two of the values here. So for this area, the 10% windiest area has a average power density of around 1,800 watts per meter squared at 100 meters, and an average wind speed of around 12 meters per second at 100 meters for the 10% windiest areas. So um, what I thought we could do here would be to look at this value for a these values for a different height. So we go to 50 meters now, and you can do that just by clicking on the, the uh, height selector. And we now see uh, some updated display here, and we can see some new uh, values for the 10% windiest area. So now the power density is 1,500 watts per meter squared, and the wind speed is 11.1 .1 meters per second at 50 meters. This is still a very high resource area, and even at this uh, lower height. What we could do now is explore um, where could we put turbines uh, in, in this area. Uh, you notice the winds, uh, the directions are from the south or slightly southwest, um, and also from the north northeast. So we can maybe think about uh, placing turbines along the ridges in, in rows like this um, would could be a good uh, configuration and in order to know more about what a certain turbine would give in terms of its energy production at any of these locations we can perform a preliminary energy yield calculation using the global wind atlas so we'll do that by clicking on this tab and when we click on that tab, we get um, the sort of dialog boxes for how to do an energy yield calculation. Uh, one of the very important things for that is the power curve and the turbine information. And that can be found uh, or derived or edited in numerous ways. You, you have options to upload uh, from your own disk, for example, um, and you can also edit at the, the table of the power curve here inside the browser. Um, today I'll just use one of the uh, defaults. So you can see there are a number of defaults of different IEC class 1, 2 and 3, um, all of them with a rated power of 3.45 megawatts. Um, so we've already got the class 1 um, in, the, in the browser and uh, I can press the generate plot to, to get the, the power curve plotted here. But um, if you uploaded different tables, you could then 
see a, a different power curve. Um, so there are several options here and I'm only going to change one of them today. And that was the, the height, the hub height. So the default setting is 100 meters. So that means it's using the global wind atlas data at 100 meters to, to make the estimate. But uh, as I showed before, um, even lower down, it is a very high resource area. Uh, I'm not going to put 50 there, I'm going to put um, 85. So now the calculation will be based on a wind climate at 85 meters above ground level. And this will um, be used to, uh, with the power curve to create uh, an estimate of the annual energy production. So we're now ready to, to move to the next step. And in the next step, we configure a bit more about the, 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 the turbine. Um, so for example, and the calculation. So for example, you can put in a total loss as a percentage here, which is encompassing many different losses that you would like to include in that. Um, so we start off with a 10% a, a default value, and I'm going to keep that. And then you have options for the different kinds of output you can produce. So the annual energy production, the capacity factor, or full load hours can be um, specified as output. And then you have the possibility to, to edit the name, and I'm just going to keep that the same. What happens then is that you will uh, press the calculate, calculation, and it will create a GeoTIFF file of the estimated annual energy production for every 250 meter calculation point in the Global Wind Atlas.